For today, I have a simple tutorial on painting the eighth Crucis Lancers for the Federated Commonwealth. As with other Max I've painted recently, we're starting off with a base coat of Adeptus Mechanicus Standard Gray Spray Primer from Games Workshop, Citadel line of paints. And I'm also using my 3D printed priming tool to hold the miniatures. You can find a link in the description below where you can purchase the STL files for this tool. Now for the 8th Crucis Lancers, we want to work with a variation of kind of a standard military green color. I've got Vallejo's 70.893, this is US dark green, and for the base layer of this mech, I'm mixing it with a pale green color. I've got Vallejo Model Air 71-009 duck egg green to get a slightly light green color, and I'm coating the entire mech in this color. For the next step, we're going to take a little bit of black and mix it in with our base color, which once again is Vallejo US Dark Green 70.893. Using a detailed brush, we're going to kind of dab this color all over the miniature to simulate a camouflaged armor pattern. The kind of tricky part here is getting the amount of black correct. Not enough contrast and you can't see this armor pattern effect too much contrast and it's going to look really messy. So it's probably going to take a little bit of fiddling in your part to figure out what color you actually want to apply for this second step. Also, you don't have to wait for the previous layer to fully dry to apply this step. So go ahead and start right away. Next up are two separate steps of the gray color. I've got Dawnstone from Games Workshop Citadel line of paints. And the first part is we want to paint all the gray areas that are going to be under the red stripe effect. So this includes things like the center torso, the pauldron, as well as areas of the shins of the mech. The next step of the gray color is to look for mechanical details like weapons, cooling vents, jump jets, things along those lines, maybe actuators, and give those a coat of this gray color. Continuing on with the mechanical details, we're gonna work with the silver color. I'm bringing out my shiny silver from Army Painters War Paint series. And I want to cover over all the areas that I just covered in gray for the mechanical details. Please note you're not painting the areas that are going to be part of the red stripe effect. And if you want to get a little bit of a worn down look, leave some of the gray showing. Now comes the really fun part, trying to paint a red stripe through various areas of the mech. You want to use some sort of blood red color. I'm working with the visceration from Cold Craft's line of paints. And I'm going to show you a trick in a moment here how to make it a little bit cleaner. But for right now, do the best you can in freehanding a clean stripe down the mech. If you're going to make a mistake, you want to put too much paint instead of too little paint down. Any of the gray areas get a red stripe. Now it's time to take on a little bit of a trick I mentioned just a moment ago. We're going to clean up that red line and make it more of a nice straight line. How we're going to do that is take more gray paint and just cover over the areas of the red where it got outside where you want it. And I just find that covering paint up in this way gives you a better straight line finish than trying to get it right the first time out with the red paint. Now I want to do some edge highlighting, but the fact the camo pattern makes that a little tricky. My solution is going to be to take the light green color we had back at the start. This is the duck egg green from Vallejo's model air colors. This is an airbrush paint, 71.009. And what I'm doing is I'm taking a very small amount of this paint. I am edge highlighting the one armor panel I want to highlight. Then using my paper towel here, I'm dabbing the paint a few times to kind of remove the effect of the color, giving a very subtle highlight to whatever paint was there without necessarily overwhelming the color that was there. Don't have any white in front of me, so I'm just taking some more of that duck a green, mixing it in with the gray, giving me a light gray color to edge highlight those areas of the mech. Now I've got two steps involving a black wash, and for both these steps, I'm using Citadel Shades Non-Oil. The first part here is to add some more contrast to the mech and just kind of get rid of this whole flat color thing we have at the moment. I'm running the wash in between armor panels and also around raised armor panels. I'm just going to build some more contrast into your paint job and make it easier for your eye to pick out all the details of this miniature. 
Then we're going to go back to the metallic areas that we worked on a little bit earlier and coat those areas of silver in this black wash. That's just going to add some more interesting effects to them and make those details easier to be picked out as well. And I think we're down to one final step, and that's to paint the cockpit glass. And I'm using orange. Well, I've got Tempest from Colt Craft's line of paints, and I'm going to very carefully, and you're going to need to do it very carefully in this Mac, paint the little glass panels of the cockpit. I guess they're called ferro glass, right? Battletech. And orange paints tend to be a little thin, so give it a minute or two, let the first layer dry, and apply a second layer. And well, that brings us to the end of this tutorial. Hopefully you found this thing helpful. This is the point where I normally have something sarcastic to say about the mech or maybe the faction we're painting up. But in this case, I actually like the Federated Commonwealth. May it be a great and powerful nation that lasts for centuries to come. <laughs> anyway, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield. I think the next video I'm going to do is we're jumping back to finish up the Antweight Combat Robot series. I took this guy, Nylon Brigade, which I've been working on for two years, out to the west side of the state for the Michigan mashup, and I actually managed to snag a match win. So that's a nice achievement for me for the first Antweight Combat Robot. After that, I've got some camera gear that's almost here so I can finish up this project and hopefully get the Kickstarter launched for those three sci-fi military-ish, well near future-ish, sci-fi-ish military vehicles soon and we can finally call that project also done which is now about a year and a half in the making. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.